If you need to apply the same business logic to multiple document libraries or lists, probably you are building a flow per each of the document libraries that gets triggered when there's a change, new file or changes in the list or library. Now, with this video, you'll find out how to overcome that obstacle. Let's see how this works live before jumping into the explanation. So let's create a new document library. And what I'm going to do is log this library for the webhook to react to changes that happen here. So well, for that, I'm going to need these libraries. I can get it from here. These are well, some objects that you have from the console, uh, from the front end to get the ID. Also the SAG ID, it's in here if you need to get it for your graph API action. So let's pick this list good and register this webhook over here. So video, and this is the ID, and we need also the site URL, which I'm picking from the URL in here, and putting it here. Now, we also need to set up what's the expiration timestamp for this webhook, because webhooks have uh, an end date, can be renewed, of course, we'll see that in a moment, and then we hit save. Now, behind the scenes, there's going to be a flow that's going to configure this webhook so that we get changes, any changes, from this document library that we just created. Okay, so we see here webhook is listening. We'll see the technical implementation in a moment. And we are now listening with this flow to this library. And here is the ID of the webhook in case we need to check it out. Now, from here, I'm going to close the console. I'm going to upload a file, drag and drop here. And now just by adding this file into this document library, in a moment, I will get the changes from here. Boom, and now we got it. We have to register here the last callback. And what we are doing is registering all these new files, new changes that occur here in the document library into this other table called operation logs. And uh, this is the probably, let's add a new column here. This is the file that we have just created from the English video webhook into this uh, document library. Come on. And here we go. So we have just get, uh, gotten information directly from SharePoint without creating a new flow to get the trigger from this document library. Before jumping into the technical implementation with Power Automate, I want to explain or try to explain how this works theoretically from the documentation. So we jump to this page in the documentation, you'll see a bunch of C sharp code uh, here. You don't need that. Uh, let's focus on this diagram over here, which is crucial to understand what's going on and what you need to create a webhook and register it to listen to changes into a list or library. What this diagram is explaining us is how to register a webhook. These steps are pretty clear, three steps. First, we need to submit a call to SharePoint in here saying, hey, for this list over here, which needs to be defined with this GUID, and that's what I was configuring in the demo before, tell me, so subscribe to the changes and tell me when there's uh, any change. This is what we are doing with this first call. Now, after that, SharePoint is going to respond to our application or Power Ultimate Flow saying, okay, great, whatever this is the URL that we provide in this configuration, uh, I'm sending you this random string and please respond in less than five seconds to verify that the URL that you have provided to submit changes to is working. Now what you have to do is respond saying, hey, okay, I'm listening. And this is the random string that you just provided to me to verify that I'm the one that has subscribed to this uh, webhook. And what SharePoint will tell us is, okay, create it check now the webhook is created this is basically this kind of contract handshake that is happening when you create a webhook against a like list or library in sharepoint nuances over here so maximum expiration day let's jump here you see this is the object that you are providing to sharepoint to subscribe to the webhook and what you need to say is okay which resource uh, this is the call so uh, the site and the list id notification url this is basically url of the flow we are going to be listening to or from and expiration date time is maximum six months away from the time you are subscribing also we'll see we can add a new parameter here uh, which is called client state if i'm not mistaken client state to store any information and this could be a string any hardcoded value that sharepoint is always going to bring to us when they when uh, sharepoint notifies that there's been a change into a list or library all right and important yeah don't forget that we need to respond to the webhook within five seconds or the registration is going to fail 
Now let's dive into the technical implementation using Power Automate. And well, we've got this Dataverse, uh, this model driven app to manage all the webhooks that we've got configured and running. We see that we already have the previous webhook from the Spanish version of this video. And we just created together this new webhook. They are starting this webhook settings configuration table. And what we got here is the information necessary to manage a single webhook. Let's follow the diagram here of the webhook configuration slash creation and see what's going on. So when we created the new table here, what we submitted was the following, the SharePoint site, the GUID and the expiration timestamp. These are precisely the mandatory information that is needed here with the resource notification URL. Well, this is the same flow. We'll see that anyone and expiration date time. So the list ID and the SharePoint site are mandatory fields that we need to provide when creating a webhook. So you see this webhook lifecycle called columns over here. What we're managing is first the creation of the webhook. So we've got a status to log if the creation was a failure or we are listening now or we are near expiration date, which is managed with this timestamp column. Now, after the webhook is configured, we're going to be logging in the last callback if it was a success or failure, but let's not get ahead of our service. So let's first check how a webhook is created. This is a solution where everything is being built in and you see that really we have only four flows to manage the whole thing. We have flow to create the webhook. Now they want to the broker. This is the main flow that is going to manage all the incoming calls from SharePoint, the requests, and then these two manage the renewal of the flow. Check if the we are near expiration date and then renew the flow. Just managing the handshake. So SharePoint says, okay, uh, I'll be sending you a new request, even though it should have been expired. Let's take a look at the creation. I'm going to open the creation flow and also the broker because they are intertwined by this handshake. So let's jump back here. Creation flow is going to handle these calls over here, the ones in green. So we're going to say, hey, SharePoint, tell me. So, so I'm subscribing to this list over here. And SharePoint is going to tell, okay, I'm going to send to your webhook service so the broker in our case at this random screen to verify that. And if you answer within five seconds, it will tell to the other flow, hey, it's okay. And then the webhook is created. So and then create webhook 19 minutes ago already. Creating the videos is not <laughs> the fastest task. Okay, so when a row is added, <clears throat> so when we created this record, SharePoint webhook setting, submitting all these details, this flow was triggered and the HTTP action to SharePoint was submitted with the following information. So for this list with a GUID and the subscriptions endpoint telling SharePoint, hey, this is uh, the list I want to hear from. Now you see that we had these two, really, yeah, these two flows. Let's jump one. The All this is going to be the creation flow. And the other one is the one that was in the file that we uploaded. This is the one that was triggered in the during the handshake. So here, when SharePoint tested the webhook to verify that what we are telling him that we are listening to this flow is true. So you see that this flow has two branches. This one is for the creation and this one is for the listening to changes. So this is creation and this is listen to changes. And basically what we're doing is getting the validation token, this random string that is generated by SharePoint in here. So this random string is added into the query string in the URL. And what we need to do is tell SharePoint, hey, in text plane, the, I'm just returning the random string that you just submitted to me to verify that uh, I'm who I'm, say, I'm saying I am. And this is basically it. So here we are responding, HTTP response, action, content type, text plane. And this is the same value that we got from here, the same value over here. Now, this is the next execution of the flow, which is already when we added the, when we uploaded the new file into the library. And then those is following this other branch. So when it's not creation time, but now we are listening to changes. So first what we do is we'll respond to the Chevron webhook telling yeah, yeah, we have listened to the changes and now we are going to process it, but we don't want to wait for all the processing before telling Chevron that we are okay. And what we do is, first of all, get the webhook setting. The webhook setting is this 
record because here we are holding information and we could be holding more information such as for example if this is a, a project table uh, sorry a, a project library for xyz project all right and how are we getting this id over here this is the id of the record and this is actually coming in the response from uh, sharepoint so when sharepoint is notifying this format of a change this is what they are what sharepoint is telling us this array it's always one but it's an array in case you were having multiple uh, i think listeners for the same webhook and um, what we are storing here is like a subscription id this is to identify the webhook expiration this is the expiration of the webhook to tell us hey remember that at this time uh, 28 of, uh, of december this is going to be uh, expired and we're not going longer Going to notify you and then other information resource this is the library the set url the tenant id web id uh, i think that i don't know what that is uh, and then the client state is precisely the GUID. this is the GUID of the dataverse table where we are holding the information and this was configured when we created the flow here web, web registration in the parameters in here the body well you're not seeing it but here to do notification URL, expiration date time, client state here, we are telling SharePoint, hey, this is the GUID from the trigger table so that we are notified and then everything matches. Now, following with what's going on, then we have to set up a change query. What is this about the change query? If you notice here, when we, the compose is basically getting the body from the trigger. So if we open this show row outputs. This is what SharePoint is telling us. This is not telling us anything about what actually was the change like. So what we need to do is ask SharePoint, okay, I got your message that something has changed. What exactly has changed? And this is the reason why we need to create what's called a change query. And for that, well, we are preparing the object here. You see that it's a, a well, it's better to see it in here. A JSON object here, where we are telling what types of changes we want to listen to. For more info, we've got the change query documentation uh, here. Oops. Uh, where uh, you can here get the list of all the uh, different properties that, that a change query has to listen to different things like uh, it was a file that was moved or it was a renaming or a restoring of a version so there are different changes that you can look at and normally what we want is in this case for example addition of files or updating of properties and then what we have to do is execute this change query so tell SharePoint hey uh, from the change that you told me uh, tell me tell me about the files that were added for example we see here and then what we are doing here is with these three actions what we are doing is logging the changes that happened into the webhook operation logs table and why these all these three actions this is a batch operation imagine that we have thousand records that were uploaded at a time we don't want to do a for and do a create a, a database section create if for, for each of the files that were uploaded why because we're going to hit the uh, web api web API limits of uh, database we're going to consume a lot of resources that's going to affect the licensing limits that we've got for our account and there are other considerations and here what we are doing is a create multiple batch operation if you want to know more about that let me know in the comments uh, and then just here we lock the change token and the execution was correct this is what we are saying here we are logging if this was success or a failure and then we are logging this change token this is massive change token uh, here and i don't know exactly what it's standing for but somewhere in here it, it's got a timestamp to tell SharePoint, well, and we store, we persist this change token to tell SharePoint, hey, next time we get a webhook from here, remember that we're not telling, we're not getting much information in here. We're not getting from the from SharePoint when was that the change happened and what was the change about. So what we are storing is this change token that SharePoint uh, gives us when we perform this change query over here. And this is, if we open that, it is the uh, information. And here in the change token with this string value, this is telling us, okay, this change that you got notified from happened here. And this is the, if, if you use this token for the next query, and this is why we have this conditional over here, if the change token is empty or not, if it's not empty, so this branch over here, we are going to send to the next change query this token telling sharepoint hey tell me it's since that change token happened 
So let's uh, test that out live. So I'm going to upload a new uh, file, okay? And now I'm going to wait for the webhook broker to execute. Let me pause the video, okay? Okay, so let's take a look at what happened now. So if you jump here now, we have a change token. This is the change token from the previous call. And thanks to that, we are only getting information from the new file, which is item ID 2, which is exactly this new file that has been registered and we go to webhook operations this is it this is the one and the important thing is that this change token now is the newest one so now the new file caused SharePoint to have a new change token and this is what we are storing so that the next time we are called by the webhook and then we are going to submit this change token in the change query so that we only get the newest changes since that happened now if we didn't put this change token we are going to get all the changes in the library since the beginning of time so since it was created and this is important because uh, if you forget this value you're always going to get like well duplicate messages because you're going to have a row here it's an array a row here for each of the files that are in the well changes not only file changes if uh, you rename a file change a property all those changes are registered into the SharePoint library objects and SharePoint is going to notify to you unless you tell SharePoint hey only give me since this last change token happened well and that's that hit the subscribe button give me a thumbs up then we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching till the end and take care